I'm speaking at the Source of Knowledge bookstore, a bookstore that is a virtual mecca for black literature. I have never been so impressed. Rarely have I seen a bookstore that has compiled as many titles, particularly black titles of books, as I've seen in this bookstore. Many years ago in Harlem, there was a bookstore called The Tree of Life, and it had uh, run by someone, I can't remember his name right now, but it was incredible on 120. Every black scholar went there. Um, the Schomburg was in existence as a formal place, but if you wanted a readable book, something where you didn't have to go and get a library card, it was the Tree of Life. This bookstore is called The Source of Knowledge, and the one who started it all, there's always somebody behind it, someone with an idea, is Dexter George. Dexter, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Dexter, you were born in Jamaica? No, I'm from, um, I'm from Tobago. That's right, you had told me that before, you're from Tobago. When did you decide that you wanted to go into books as a, as a profession? Well, really and truly, um, um, my whole family really was um, into books, really. Um, from New York, you know, we started off on a table in New York you know what I'm saying, and um, then we branch off, you know, everybody goes their separate ways. And then I, um, I come up and come to Newark over here um, with this store called Source of Knowledge. What year did you come here to Newark, and why did you choose Newark? Why didn't you choose Brooklyn or Philadelphia or Chicago? Why Newark? Well, well um, we had a small store, really, in um, Brantford Place, um, we was looking for location, and we, you know, was you know, we picked Brantford Place, you know, years ago. That's about thirty years ago, and um, I meet a beautiful sister, you know, what I'm saying Masani, you know, <laughs> you know, the wife in my life, you know, and um, the backbone, one of the backbone behind Source of Knowledge. You're one of the few men who will admit that. <laughs> <laughs> one of the few men, yeah. black or white or Chinese <laughs> or Latino, who will admit that his wife. Um, is the source of his life. That's an important thing to say, Sonny. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So now you have a wife. Now you got to make some money. Yeah. And um, not only the wife, also I have the second wife, which I call the store wife, which is Patrice. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, my son is a teacher also. She's a guidance counselor. And Patrice, what I call as the, um, the source of knowledge wife, which means that she runs the bookstore in the day. Patrice is the political wife. Yes, <laughs> yes, hot, yes. This is not a Muslim thing here. No, no. This is not a Mormon thing here. No, no. 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 Okay. no. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Hard enough with one. Imagine yeah. two. Mm -hmm. So, 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 um, you know, I, um, I consider myself as the, the root at the, at, the, at the foundation, you know, but they are the branches and, you know what I'm saying, that keep the, the, the store really going. But why Newark? Well, well, to, to tell you the truth, um, since I met the wife, I realized that um, this is my home base now. Um, her family, everybody is living here, everybody is from here. And the, and the community has been the, 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 the real um, root that keep up this foundation, that really keep this store going. They really support us tremendously, you know what I'm saying? So I can't, I don't even know how to say thank you to my supporters or to the people that really keep us going. So, so Newark is what I consider as our home. It's our home, it's our community, it's our home base. And this way I think that it's supposed to be. I would never pick another place beside Newark. You can say thank you right to that camera. Thank you to all Newarkers. Thanks for keeping us in business. All right. <laughs> Share with uh, our viewers uh, your outreach program to schools. To schools, we um, offer something every month or every other month, depending on how well the funding comes in. Um, we work with some, a, a project called the Maroon Project, in which we do a books and breakfast, as well as something we call a read and feed, in which we send out information to the schools and to the community, YCMSA, YMCAs, and let them know that on one Saturday a month, we're giving out breakfast and free books to the children. And they really leave with two books, because we have books that are donated, and so we give them a free book. This book is a book in which they see their faces in. They see children that look like them, act like them, and, and, and things in that book that inspire them to be better. 
Isn't isn't it amazing how we do better when we eat and read? Yes, <laughs> yes, most definitely. What, what is that about? What we do, we feed them a hot meal. It's from nine to twelve. Free. Free. Everything is free because it's important for them to read. Coming up, I could never watch TV. We were a family of readers. Um, my father always had a book in his hand. My mother was nosy, so she always read The Star and the Inquirer, mm -hmm, something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But we, we always read in, the, in our house. So we want to teach the kids to read. And not only that, we want the books to look like them, to show them that black is beautiful mm -hmm. in all shapes and colors and tones and textures, everything. Dexter, how... What, have you seen attitudes change since you've been in the shop? Come closer, Papa. <laughs> have you seen Have you seen attitudes change? Students that come here and then bring their children here. Oh yes, yeah, do. There's um, a matter of fact, the um, the wife here is a teacher, and um, I see many of her students, which is you know beautiful young. Um, how to say? Some of them is even parents now, mm -hmm. and they would bring their kids. Uh, you know, they came here from the small with their parents. Now they are bringing their kids here just to get some of the knowledge from source of knowledge. So I've seen tremendously people change all the time from generation to generation. And it's a real wonderful thing that this store is here. So our, our people and the kids could come back to, that, to this knowledge. I'm gonna tell you all something. This is more than a bookstore. This feels like a temple. There's a spirituality about this place that is very, very strong. Uh, and I'm very sensitive to that sort of stuff. You come in here and you feel God. You feel the spirit. Now, I'm not going to get into what, you know, what religion or, or denomination people are, but you feel that this is a holy place. I don't know if you all know that. This is a holy place. And you feel it from your smile. You feel it from your dedication. I felt it when I was talking to uh, Patricia. I call you Patricia. <laughs> Her name is Patricio. Um, the other day, but I feel it very strongly here. Um, what is that about Dexter? Well, well, well. Tell you the truth, it's 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 a community store, and when somebody come inside of here, we want them to feel comfortable. Comfortable. I want them to feel like they're at home. We always tell them, feel at home, feel free. We ain't gotta walk around and look at nobody. We don't do that. We ain't gotta do that. Um, my, my personality is, 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 is very simple. This is not our store. It always been like that. It's the community owned. We could never have this store here without the community. Mm. As I said, we own the root of the foundation. The branches is the people. The branches are the people. You know? Um, uh, what are the challenges you are facing these days? Uneasy. What, what are the challenge? Are, are you funded? How are you funded, first of all? If you're doing stuff for schools, does the Board of Education give you money? How does it work? Because we got to talk about economics here. <laughs> well, the Board of Education, because I'm on their payroll as a teacher and counselor, that's how. <laughs> okay. But um, the, 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 the largest, the biggest challenge we have is really getting and continuing to get the name of Source of Knowledge out there, letting everyone know that this is a place that they can come, they can look around, they can feel safe, they can feel comfortable. Um, I, you, you talk about that, that temple, that warmth feeling, um, and I think that's because we don't, do, we don't know how to do anything other than the way we feel from the heart. Mm. When, I, um, t when I first began teaching, my students, um, I brought them down here as a field trip. We were learning about sales tax. So I said, we're gonna take a field trip. And not that we weren't buying anything, but I just let them know. And not realizing that I was also exposing them to something that they would have normally come past this block and walked right by it. But now when they walk past it, they're like, oh, I remember I went there. And they come in and they shop and, they, and they're and they affiliated with it and they know that it's a part of them. They feel very comfortable coming in and they also were able to bring more. But when we do things, we do everything from the heart. So therefore, everybody comes in and they know that this is sincerity. Yeah, this is the spot. And I'm telling you, I'm Dexter. Don't cry, baby. Don't cry. <laughs> I see tears in your eyes. I don't want you to cry now. Um, the, I see stuff here that you don't see anybody. Um, folks, it's not only 
um, black. They have Latino stuff here. They have Puerto Rican stuff. Where else are you going to go and find the history of Puerto Rico? Boricuas in Gotham, tropical kitsch, Cuban festival. This is unbelievable. And hopefully you'll get more so that more Latinos can come in here. Mm -hmm. More Puerto Ricans, more Dominicans, more Cubans, more Portuguese can come in and understand their African history mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. our foundation is African. And that's what we try to teach, that we all are one. They try to make a division that you're this or you're that, but we all are one. You see those drums between Puerto Rican's legs? Yeah. Where does that drum come from? Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, we now know that the Cubans are Nigerian, the Puerto Ricans are Congolese, mm. and Dominicans are from Guinea. So we have, we encompass the entire African continent. If you'd be surprised at where the roots are, with it, plus Islamic culture, which is, we have a lot of that in us too. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and you got a lot of Indian blood in you, I can see it in your face. <laughs> if you're from Tab Tobago, oh, Tobago, you know, Tobago, 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 a lot of Native American. Um, I'd like now to, to, to go to the art uh, section, which is in the back. You know, there's something else I want to say. Um, you just asked if we are funded. Um, I think we are funded by the community. Um, we never really borrow no money from nobody, and and I I, I don't. Next to you, never borrow from a never bank. Never borrow no no never. never get no money from no bank. Nothing. Never did. Everything in the store here is paid for. Are you serious? Everything is paid for. You know what I'm saying. Um, never try to get no money borrowed from nobody. Um, what we do really is sacrifice. Sometime in the morning, my day start five o'clock down here. I ain't go home back sometime until 12 o'clock in the night. Mm. Mm. So it's a constant sacrifice. I don't drive around with a Mercedes Benz. I don't do that. Because when I work, I doesn't work for me. I work for my kids. Yes. So, so, so that's the main goal. So the, 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 I'm really grateful for my, to my customers and them. They's the one that really keep us going. Mm -hmm. I would think that the churches in Newark would want to give you money. <laughs> you know what I mean? I would think the schools would throw money at mm -hmm. you because you're keeping kids occupied. I would think that parents who are doing the wrong things would want their kids to come here. You know, we make a lot of money from drugs. We can make a lot of money from books. That's right. Mm -hmm. Teach them knowledge of self. That's so, so important. Yeah. Because if they knew where they came from, they would know that they were kings and queens. Yeah. And they wouldn't do the things that they do. So we understand because that's the way the system is set up to teach them um, that they are bad from the beginning. But we re-educate them, deprogram them, and reprogram them. True. I was going to say that you can't walk into the store and think you want to shoot somebody or hurt somebody. No. You don't feel it at all in no, the store. No, no. What you feel is love. And that's what we really love each and every person. Anybody that knows me, I'll keep you in here forever <laughs> talking. <laughs> Dexter, your art collection is superb. You have stuff here that, that chills the body. It chills the body. It, it excites the brain, but it chills the body. This particular shot um, is something Ray Tidwell, who's our cameraman right now, is in love with. This is a great shot. And this is 1619, an African looking at the ships, the European ships coming into Africa. It's an amazing shot. Yes, it's, it's, it's wonderful. And this one is called a catch. Um, done by Wack, Kevin Wack Williams, Kevin A. Williams. Um, what is it really is? Um, our African ancestors and them was at the sea fishing, and you know they saw the slave ship, you know. So instead of he caught the fish, they caught him. Yes. You know. So, so this is how I really look at this picture. But um, but um, th there's a story that I really want to tell about this art business that I have going on down here. Um, was about um, 25 years ago I was in Brooklyn and I was selling books and there was a brother was next to my booth he was selling art and what happened I went out of my booth and went and sit down on the lawn just looking at his the art that he have and he just hit me and I couldn't leave all day I, let, I had workers was working for me I just stood outside just looking at what he was doing and just fall in love with the art. So what happened at the end of the show, I bought, 20, I bought 50 pieces from him and then I bring them to the store and the 50 pieces was sold out in two weeks that was gone. Now what happened, I called him back the next day and said, listen, I want 300 pieces by. 
knowing that he couldn't fill the order, I went, I, I went out the road on Broad Street. I get me a caller ID. I connected to my phone, and he called me from the people that he was buying from. Mm. So I didn't really need him again. That's how this picture business really started. I'm self-taught. Never really been anywhere. Never be really been to any school to really to do this. Well, you have a great eye. The st the one above you mm -hmm. is an abstraction, but it's beautiful. It's called Love Letter. Yes. Um, and it's a representation of the black woman. That's what it is. It's um, beautiful. There's one right behind you called Black and Blue, which is absolutely beautiful. She's very sad, and if you look around her neck, you see the flag that's around her neck. No American matter how flag. yes, no matter how beautiful you are. Because you're black and American, you don't have a chance. That's, those are the hidden messages. Mm -hmm. Dexter, you're a revolutionary. Yep, I'm telling you. Yes. <laughs> you're starting up. Yes, and I have another two piece, two more pieces I want to show you. That Let's um, explain Black Tuesday to us. It's by Edwin Lester. By Edwin Lester. And this is during the time... Black Wall Street crashed. And if you look closely up to the sign where it says Sunday service, whites mm -hmm. only, mm -hmm. from 8.30 to 9.30, from 10 to 11. Colored, from 8 to 8.15. If you look at his watch, his watch says 8.20. He missed his tides by five minutes. And that was Black Tuesday when they destroyed Black Wall Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a deep piece. Very deep. And we had a Wall Street in Oklahoma, didn't we? Yes, we did, that they destroyed. And they destroyed it. They went through that town, killed black people, and burnt the town to the ground. It yes. was one of the most prosperous towns in America at exactly. the time. Exactly. There was also a very famous film called Rosewood. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. About Florida. Yes. Same, same premise. Same premise. Mm -hmm. um, it, there's a, a, this is a beautiful shot. Royal Oh, Blue. yes. This Royal is Blue. another one. That I love. He's one of my favorite. I have like two. Of this them. is by Frank Morrison. Yes. Uh, Royal Blue. She is absolutely stunningly that's beautiful. The epitome of a black goddess. Look at the eyelashes. And then what I like about Frank Morrison and his work, he has a lot of subliminal messages mm -hmm. in his art. If you see, you see that in her skirt is the city lights. Yes. You always see musical notes. He he loves musical notes mm -hmm. all through her hair. That one, but the one I really want to focus on, oh, The Wish is another beautiful one. Um, you know those weeping willows we used to blow when we were kids? Yeah. She's blowing that, but she's blowing out music. And if you look at it, you see the music coming out of her hair. And all in her skirt is different messages. He's very into music, as you can see. But my favorite of his now is Indentured Servants here. Mm -hmm. Your art should be a conversation piece. All of us is he here in this room and everybody's gonna see something different. Me, myself, I see the affinity. I see the struggle. I see the womb. You see the womb, you I see? see? <laughs> what did you say? I see him coming out, pushing forward. Yeah. That gentleman pushing out, you know, pulling him, pulling out. Yeah, or the struggle. Mm -hmm. But that's what the art should be. Indentured so, servants, it's called. Indentured service. It should be a conversation piece. I, I see slavery for some reason. Well, yeah. yeah, well, indentured servants were people who came from Britain who uh, had to pay off their debts. Mm -hmm. The Irish were right beside us in the fields in Alabama, South Carolina, Georgia, um, and there was no such thing as b white people at that point. Mm -hmm. Race was not a factor until they decided to take the Irish and say to them, you're a little better, and we're gonna make you the managers of black people. Okay. All of us have Irish names, mm -hmm. McLaughlin, Morgan, uh, McKinney. McKinney. <laughs> Dexter has a, has a, a British name. Mm -hmm. So what happens is white folks were right beside us in the fields working. In fact, they had so many rebellions that they decided to divide black from white because black and white were fighting against the slave master. And so this, to me, is a phenomenal, a phenomenal painting because the woman could be Latina in there, too. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. it's an amazing yes. story. Yes, I love is. it. Just I love it. one piece. Like I said, it's a conversation piece that all of us saw something different. Frank Morrison, one of my favorites. Is he alive? Yes, he is. Very How old much. is he? Frank should be in his 50s. No, he's about 40. Yeah, about, yeah. Dexter, he's in his 40s? A young man. You have sculpture here, too. Yes. This is from Zimbabwe. That's from Zimbabwe? Yeah, those are from Zimbabwe. Is, that's not Malachite, is it? I think we are, is that um, green? Certain time, I think it is. Yes. Yeah, done by the um, the Shona people. Shona. 
Um, I will tell you something else. For me, one of the most beautiful pieces here is the one right down here. Melody from Heaven. Look at the beauty of yeah. that girl playing her violin. That to me is, I mean, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's better than all of the others, but that is a gorgeous piece. And, and something else that, you, that I noticed, that I see in it, she has wings, angel wings. Oh, you I see that in the back? That. Conversation, yeah. Like yeah. I said, everybody's going to see something different in the art, and that's the beauty of the art that we, that uh, our people yeah, create. See that. Yes, yes. <laughs> also, um, source of knowledge, not only do we want you to read, but we want you to also come as a safe gathering. We do monthly um, poet open mics. We do monthly comedy shows. Uh, we have space available for your own special events. We've had held weddings, fashion shows, birthday parties, um, as well as our lectures. So we're open to many things. So please come out and support and make this your home. Make it your home. Have to bring your children, to bring your minister, to bring your husband or lover um, to a place to be inspired, um, to feel God, and to feel education and scholarship, it's source of knowledge. Make sure this Christmas or any other day of the year that this should be the place, the source of knowledge that you come here. Ask for Anise, ask for Janice, ask for Dexter. They are the front people. They are the ones who will guide you through this temple. But it's important that you come here and to give your kids a sense of legacy. Janice has mentioned before, if you don't read, you're bound to repeat the history of your ancestors, and our, our history has not been great, at least in this country. But you can find out the history of your ancestors who built the pyramids, who developed algebra, who developed um, medicine. medicine. Um, remember that all the Greeks got their stuff from Mali, That's right. the African Timbuktu and Songhai. The project started in Mali because they had multi-story buildings. These are things that we need to know about. Um, and when Picasso talks about his art, he always goes right back to Africa. Yeah. His cubism came right out of this. Look at this piece and tell me if you don't see, P Picasso got his stuff from this. So now what we need to do is remember that as we bring our children up, black and Latino, there's no division here, black and Latino, recuérdate que Ustedes son Africanos también. It's the Source of Knowledge Bookstore. We're going to call it the Temple as well. 867 Broad Street, Newark, New Jersey. The number is 973-824-2556. 973-824-2556. Felipe Luciano reporting straight smack dab in the middle of Newark on Broad Street at the Source of Knowledge. Dexter is the man to talk to. Anise, his wife. Patrice, um, the, his co-wife, we'll call her, <laughs> come and check this place out. It is lovely. Peace, y'all.